Hi guys, God bless you. Uh, I wanted to just give you an update of uh, where I'm at at this stage and really wanted to thank um, people all around the world across Australia that have been praying for me. Uh, those of you that uh, have been following the situation you know that I have um, actually been arrested three times now um, and uh, back in February uh, where I refused to close the doors of my church um, I was arrested um, and charged and bailed uh, and then just recently again when I refused to uh, close the doors of my church um, I was arrested charged and then um, jailed for, I did 17 days in jail uh, in Melbourne, uh, Victoria, Australia. Uh, 14 of those days was in solitary confinement. And, uh, and uh, there was a, a day or two at the beginning and at the end where I was in with the general population. Um, I, I really wanted, uh, and again, thank you so much for your prayers. Just give you a little bit of a story of what happened in that time. Um, obviously, it's not a nice place to be in jail, but I really want to thank God for his love, his strength, and uh, just the knowledge that so many were praying. Um, I saw a, a an incredible move of God uh, the time that I was with uh, other men, um, starting at uh, Dadinong Police Station, uh, in with uh, three guys there, and led two of those three guys um, uh, in tears, uh, kneeling on the floor, confessing their sin, surrendering their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, I was just thinking on this this morning, and, I, and you know how you forget so many things and things come to you as you remember. And I remembered that one of the men, when I, they first took me in um, after um, interviewing me and they locked me in, in, a, in a cell, uh, actually, which was three degrees uh, which was just disgraceful. But uh, anyway, they finally put me in uh, with uh, three other men uh, into a jail cell. And the, the, one of the men told me later, he says, when you walk through the door, something hit me in my heart and my heart leaped and knew that something good was going to happen to me today. And I thought that was a real blessing. Um, but this man kneeling on, on, the, on the, the floor of the jail in tears, surrendering his life to the Lord. Then in the bus on the way through to the... Um, to, to map uh, into prison in, in Melbourne. Uh, I had about an hour and a half just with one man uh, in, in little cubicles in, in, in this bus. You're not in a big bus open, uh, little tiny little section. So it was just me and one other man. And, um, and, I, and I certainly wanna, wanna thank the police at that, that point for allowing me to keep my Bible with me. So through that whole time, I was sharing the word of God with this man. And for about half an hour, he wept and wept and wept as God touched him and uh, as, as the Holy Spirit moved. And uh, again, he confessed his sin and surrendered his life to the Lord. When I arrived, they then put me, processed me, placed me in another cell where two or three men came in and out at that point. I led another two men to the Lord and prayed with another man. Uh, and then at that, that point, they, they put me in solitary confinement. Um, and uh, for the first five days I had my Bible with me then they moved me and they removed my Bible some of you had heard that they refused to give me my Bible and that 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 was hard that was tough um, I think we have no idea really how tough it is when you're in a situation like that and uh, of course solitary confinement um, you know all I had was a few pens and a paper and a, and a tiny TV about 15 inches that was it no books nothing um, and prior to that, as I said, they allowed me through my request to um, to keep my Bible with me. But when they removed that, you know, that hit me hard, and that was that was some tough times. And uh, I went for quite some days there, continually requesting for my Bible, uh, but uh, then refused. I finally requested a formal request to the prison warden warden uh, to have my Bible, uh, and that got processed. Um, uh, and they finally gave me a, a new Bible. Um, and so that was just, and, and they, they, you know, that day I, I reckon I spent half the day just feeding on the Word of God. Uh, and by the next day, I just felt so strong and so secure in God. And um, one testimony is, is, is if, that I would like to share with you is every day, every morning, about mid morning, um, I would sing and worship the Lord. As many of you know I'm, I'm a singer songwriter. I've done four albums, about to do my fifth album, by the way. They're very excited about that. Um, 
And uh, so I would spend a uh, minimum of one hour. In fact, one morning I spent two and a half hours just singing as many hymns as I could remember, worship songs. Uh, this was out loud. Look, every, every every prisoner in that solitary area and, and the um, staff and the guards and stuff have would have heard it without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, in fact, uh, I think the second day that I did this, one of the guards, when they were bringing me a meal in the in the morning or breakfast or something, they said, don't you know anything else but Amazing Grace? And I said, wow, I said, I sang 60 songs yesterday and you can only remember Amazing Grace, but that's great. And uh, I think that next day I sang for two and a half hours. Um, but I didn't miss one day, not even one day, did I miss um, in solitary confinement out of the 14 days between one and two hours, worshiping the Lord and singing praises to his name. And that was just, just so powerful. Um, when they then released me and moved me into the general population, I had really only a day and a half, two days. I think I arrived at 2 p.m. that afternoon. And uh, from 2 p.m. till 7.30 p.m., gee, did I see God move. Um, just by the grace of God that it really empowered me and strengthened me, uh, I saw a revival break out there. I went from one man to the other. And uh, over the, uh, from the, those first day and a half and the last day and a half, I had the privilege by the grace of God of leading 15 men to the Lord Jesus Christ in confession of their sins and spoke to many others. And so it was just, a, just absolutely wonderful. Uh, a cellmate that they put me in, it's a young, young boy, um, Asian young boy. I, I remember that first day I arrived and in the afternoon, I just went up to my cell and I saw him standing next to the window and I just put my hand on his shoulder. I said, are you OK? And he just turned around and fell in my arms and just sobbed and sobbed as I was just praying for him. God, touch him, touch him. Then I set him on the bed and uh, and I walked up and down for maybe 20 minutes and just sang quiet worship songs. Uh, and then they had this little desk in there and I kept a diary. I will be releasing my diary every day. I kept a diary. I'll be releasing that soon. Um, but I, I sat down and, and just began to write. The next next thing I knew is this young boy had fallen to his knees next to me, was sobbing his heart out, just crying out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So then I had the privilege of leading him to the Lord. Um, you, you do the typical walk in there. Uh, and so one day I was also walking with uh, two men and just sharing the gospel. Um, I might say that every, every man that I, I really led in a sinner's prayer and, and uh, prayed with, I'd, I'd spent time beforehand clearly sharing clearly the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ before I asked if I could pray with them. And this man, I was, I was walking, trying to keep up with him, walking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And his, his mate beside him, his best friend beside him, was sharing the gospel. And he was saying, but you know, you know, how do you know God's real? How, how can you feel God? And I was sharing with him. And at the end of that, I said, look, I can pray with you now if you'd like to surrender your life to God and confess your sins. He said, yeah, I'd love to pray. So I prayed with him. And then, you know, prior to speaking this, every second word was an F word. And, um, and then, and no joke, after I prayed with him, he stood up and he goes, F, F, F to his mate. He goes, this is real. No, I'm not F joking you. This is, I can feel the power. I can feel the presence of God. This is real. No, I'm not having you on with a number of F words. He says, this is real and I can feel God. I've never felt this before in my life. And so that was so wonderful. Um, you know, I could, I could, I could could go on for some time here and just share the wonderful testimonies of uh, the men that I was able to share with and uh, when I got um, when I got bailed out of there I went back to my cell and had to pack up my gear and I walked out of my cell and, you know it's just like a prison cell like you you imagine it's just like in you know Shawshank Redemption you've got the top except obviously more modern than that now but you've got the top rows of mezzanine floor and the bottom rows with cells up the top and the bottom so I was up the top and when I got bailed out I went back and packed up my belongings and stood out the top and there was in my section there's probably 50 to 75 men and uh, I, I moved over to the rail and I yelled out right guys I'm bailed out of here now I want all you men to get your lives right with God and uh, I love you guys I'll be praying for you every day and uh, absolutely amazing. And then I walked down those stairs and so many men came up and gave me a hug. And I said, guys, I'm praying for you. And the men that I led to the Lord, they came up and said goodbye and hugged me. The guards were standing there with their mouths open and one made a comment, wow, that speaks a world, you know, and, um, and, uh, and, I, and I prayed with the guys and said that God started a revival here. You guys, you guys need to keep it going. And uh, that was just absolutely 
a powerful time. The first night I was there late in the afternoon, I remember standing up there and I looked down and there was a man walking with a guitar. And I just couldn't help myself. It just blurted out and I yelled at him, hey, there's a guitar, bring that up here. And the guy looked up at me and goes, no, you know, and there was a couple of guys standing around me and they started abusing him, saying, you bring that up here now. I said, hey, guys, just, just settle down, let him go. He, he'll be he'll, okay. And uh, within 10 minutes, he was he was up on his own will. He'd walked up and was standing next to me with a guitar. So I took the guitar and I spent, uh, I, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes an hour and uh, I was just singing and I did like a bit of a concert in there. But yeah, all the guys didn't gather around in one big pile, but they came up in groups of two and three and stood with me and listened. And uh, down down beneath me, there was guys sitting on chairs and they kept looking up and listening. You, you could hear everything. And uh, in fact, I was down one end, I was so loud, there was guys on the phone, they yelled out, shut that bloke up. And I said, oh, sorry guys. I moved down the other end and kept singing. And, uh, and so God really moved that. And then that evening um, before lockup, the um so many guys came up to me saying wow that was you on the guitar that's awesome it's been six months since we've heard any music live music like that in here and the next day again during the course of the day came and says was that that was you on the guitar last night wasn't it you know so that was that was just just wonderful so um you know i'm not saying it was easy and it was it's was jolly hard in there and uh you know i had my moments where you know i was just in tears before god and, and breaking down and and but it was also a time where i just really drew draw close to god and um, you know, the beginning when I had His Word, and the end when I had His Word, it was just, um, just, just soaking up the Word of God. Um, interesting. Um, when I first arrived into uh, the general population, and you know, I was, I was very polite with all the policemen, and um, and uh, when I arrived there, and and uh, they led me to my cell, and when they left, these two big guys come in and said, "We want to talk with you," and I said, "Yeah," and they goes, "Yeah," says, "You, you know, you're being too friendly to the police. They are enemies. You've got to understand they are enemies. So don't you be so friendly to them. You just, I can see now. We're giving you a warning because we see you're new." And he says, "You want to know anything? You come and talk to us. We'll let you know everything." I said, "Okay, guys, no problems." And uh, you know, later on that night, after the guitar experience and and sharing with men all afternoon, um, just before lock up about seven thirty. Uh, moved into my cell and these two big burly guys, which I recognise as the two, you know, one of the, well, the two ringleaders of my section. And they walked in again and said, we want to talk with you. And I said, yeah, guys. And he said, I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, if anyone gives you a hard time, we're in cell XX, you know, and uh, 61, whatever it was. And uh, they said, just come and tell us and we'll sort the whole thing out. And I thought, thank you, Lord. That's just, just amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's many things I've forgotten. But again, I just really want to... Um, Want to thank all those that uh, been prayed. I must say also that there, were, I think there was a letter campaign go out, and um, sadly, I think it takes a couple of weeks to get letters. Um, so just as they uh, let me out, seventeen days, I think those next few days would have been flooded. I, I checked with them. I said, "Guys, you're going to be flooded with letters." I said, "I hope you're going to forward them to me." And they said, "Yeah, we'll forward them all on to you," but they haven't. So those who've written letters, uh, th they've just done RTS, return to senders. So you will. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll get those letters, and um, if you want to forward them back to me, that'd be wonderful. Um, 64 Victor Crescent, Narry Warren, 64 Victor Crescent, Narry Warren, The Revival Church, um, 3805 Victoria, Melbourne, Australia. Um, I'd love to, to read all those letters, and, uh, and, and God bless you. Thanks so much. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I will be uh, you know, bringing out a, my daily diary which uh, I'll be releasing sometime when I can work through it and just just get it up there to um, to just give you a bit more of a personal feel of of uh, you know what I went through and how I felt and uh, I, and 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 you know coming out um, I've I've been given one interview uh, I'm on very very strict bail conditions which we're looking at um, you know opposing and uh, we're still going to give a, a defence counsel. Uh, you know, I've got to face all these charges still. So there's still two court cases coming up. So I appreciate your prayer on all of those and um, for, for wisdom and the grace of God to know how to respond and how to act in this situation. And uh, so, so God bless you. We'll keep in touch. And uh, thanks again. Amen.